In the previous video, I have mentioned that the rigid body variable that we've created has value known by default, and we need to explore what does it mean in terms of our data types. So the data types like int, float, or bool are directly storing their variables where we define them. Technically, we can say that those are stored in a memory area called a stack. It's a bit like writing a number on a piece of paper, it's just there. We call those primitive types, which are simple, and the Visual Studio compiler knows exactly what to put there, so zero means basically nothing in math, so we can default to this value when we create our int variable. On the other hand, in Unity, when we have created this rigid body 2D reference value in the player script, at the start it has the value of none. So when we declare a variable like our underscore rb2d of type rigidbody 2 d we are not directly storing all its data. Instead, think of it as storing a map that leads to where the actual data lives. And actually, at the start, this map doesn't lead anywhere. That's why the value is set to be none or null. In the code, when a reference variable doesn't point to an object, we say that it is null. So the null keyword is a literal that represents a null reference, one that does not refer to any object. So in our code, when we create this private rigid body 2D and we do not add the serialized field, we are going to set it basically to the value of null. So it isn't connected to any object of type rigid body in our game. And this is because C Sharp compiler has no idea what this rigid body might be because it is a complex object with many variables or many methods or behaviors, so it isn't straightforward what we should set as the default value, that's why we default to a value of null. So that is the main difference between the reference types like rigidbody2d, rb2d and something like private int a. By default, a primitive type of the type integer can be set to zero by default because compiler knows that it is a simple type and zero means nothing in this case. But with the rigid body or any other object, it has no idea what is the default type. That's why we always use null to say that this reference variable rb2d that should point to a rigid body 2d object is not pointing anywhere right now and we can't really use it. Well, we can already use the a value for some calculations. To test it, let's go to Unity and in the player object, in the player script, just do the same as I did, select this cog icon and if you had this player, just select it and select none here. And now if you press play, you will immediately see in the console an error, unassigned reference exception, the variable underscore rb2d of player has not been assigned. Okay, now the default way to create objects that are more complex than the primitive type is by calling new and typing rigid body 2D and parentheses because this is called a constructor. We use a new keyword and then we type the name of the object and pass any data relevant to this in between those parentheses and this should create a new object of rigid body 2D and assign it to our rb2d reference variable. If you recall our map metaphor, this will add a destination to our map and will make our reference variable rb2d with an underscore to be pointing to this rigid body 2d object that we say is stored in a memory area called a heap. So in C sharp new operator creates an instance of a type. And we can read below, to create a new instance of a type, you typically invoke one of the constructors of that type using the new operator. Now, wait a minute, Peter, didn't we just create objects in Unity by just dragging our script on a game object in our hierarchy? That is true. Rigid body to the object as well as other objects in Unity that are not the simple types like Vector2 are not created using the new keyword. Instead, in Unity, if you want to select this cloud object and make it into a player object, we drag our script onto this and this is automatically calling a new keyword. If you want to make it into a rigid body, we just select this add component button and type rigid and find rigid body 2D. And here it is. And here now the clouds is a rigid body object and we can now drag it and assign it as a rigid body 2D of our player script. Now, if you are following uh, those examples, remember to select those three dots and remove component because we do not want our clouds to be of type player. 
So this is tricky when working with Unity. Most of the objects provided by Unity required us to add them as components to our game objects, while the objects that we create ourselves or C Sharp specific objects or data types like Vector2 requires a new keyword. But the question now is, why do we even need those reference types? Can't we just store everything as value type and be done with it? Well, let me get back to .NET Fiddle because I want to show you the reason for it. We have this program, a main function, basically it will create a variable of type int called a and it will call on it a modify int method and you can see that this method takes int value and it uses this value equals value plus one, so basically it adds plus one to it. And next we console write line, so we write it to the console the value of a. If I run it, you will see that the value was one. We have added to it one, but then a console write line printed one. So what is going on here? Well, the method takes int value, but actually it copies the value of a as a new value of int type because int is passed by value. So we get the copy of int inside the method, we uh, increase the copy by one, and next we get back nothing. We get this a value unmodified from the above and we print it. So we can't really modify a value type by passing it to a method. Well, you can, but the point is to show you the reason for reference types. The problem is that we wanted this modify int method to modify the past value, so the int value, but we can't really do that because the integer type is primitive type that is passed by value, so any method that takes in an int value copies the value instead of getting a reference to it. So now what we want is our code and the method code to have access to the same reference that allows us to modify our int value. I'm back in .NET Fiddle and here is another example that contains a reference type my rigid body. So here we have my rigid body rb2d equals new and we create a new instance of my rigid body which is just a public class my rigid body that has two variables float velocity x and float velocity y to represent the velocity similar to what we have in our script. Now, here we are using this new keyword to instantiate my rigid body as an object. So this looks very familiar like a method definition. And indeed it is. It is a special method called a constructor. We type it by calling public my rigid body. So this is the name of the class. It needs to match exactly the name. We need to give it a parenthesis and we need to give it a set of curly brackets because this is the code block of this constructor. And this is what is known as a constructor. We could define here that the velocity uh, x is equal to some default value like 10, just like an int has the default value of zero. But basically this is the default constructor and it is created by default by the c -sharp compiler. Now next I'm passing this reference variable rb2d to the modify rigid body method which is defined here. So the key change here is that this is now a reference to the my rigid body object that is somewhere on the heap. So this means that we are not passing the copy of it but rather a reference to it. So this means that if I run now my code by default, the velocity x is equal to zero, but then I modify it to the velocity x in our method is modified to be equal to two. And then I console.write line rigidbody2d.velocityx, and the result is two. So the key difference here is that the method now can modify the value of our uh, my rigid body object. So the values of velocity x and velocity y, and the change persists into our main method that calls our method and the method returns the control to the main method and then we log the value that was modified so the value of 2. So the point of reference type is that we can now affect the rigid body object rather than creating a new rigid body object by creating a copy of it and then applying the copy so creating a new player because this would be inefficient in terms of memory management. So in our game Instead of creating a rigid body component every time we want to modify it, we give the player script an option to modify the velocity value of this rigid body component attached to our player. 
So thanks to reference types, we can very easily reuse a lot of logic that we have already written for different components. And it will become more apparent when we go to the next video where we cover arrays and for loops. But for now, let's go back to our code and fix our bug connected to the movement speed. The bug in our code is connected with math. And the problem here is that we are assigning to the velocity the input value that we have received from our update. But the problem with the input is that if we press the up arrow and right arrow, the vector is 1 and 1. So the magnitude or the length of this would be 1.41, I think, or something like that. Now compare it to if only one of those is 1. So in this case, the length of this vector would be 1.0. So you can see that if we are moving diagonally, the value here is greater than 1 and the velocity is greater than 1. So this is the problem and to fix it we just need to normalize our input vector. So let's do that. In the update we are going to call input dot and we are going to call the normalize method which is interesting because this method is making this vector having a magnitude of 1 so we are affecting the value of this input vector rather than creating a new vector. Okay now this fixes the magnitude but we still are moving very slow. So we are going to just create a global variable for our player class. We are going to create a serialized field and we are going to create private float underscore speed and let's set this by default to 3 or we can type 3f because this is a float value but this is our speed and to apply it we need to go to our fixed update and apply it to the velocity. Now we are going to just multiply the input times the speed value and here we do not need to have the time dot delta time multiplication and this will suffice because we are modifying the velocity directly okay save the script go back to unity great select the player object and make sure that the player script if you have followed the previous examples has the rigid body assigned and that you have removed the rigid body of the player script from our clouds object if you do have it all prepared just press play Okay, and now if I start walking using the, my WASD or arrow keys, you can see that the diagonal movement isn't any faster than the movement right or left, but the movement is much faster because we have applied some speed to it, so this fixes our issues and improves our movement of the character. In the next video, we're going to make our clouds move from left to right to improve the look of our background, which will give us a great opportunity to talk about arrays and for loops in C sharp. And this should solidify your understanding of reference types since there you will see the power of reference type and how we can leverage it to make our code more reusable. Okay, see you in the next video.